Hello, I'm Patrick Stump, class of 2002, and it's an honor to be speaking with you today. Albeit through a camera phone, but an honor nonetheless. I'm sorry, I can't be there in person. Uh, I suppose I'm meant to be giving you some sort of advice today. I don't know who thought that was a good idea uh, or thought that I was qualified, but I'll certainly give it a shot. Before I do, however, I'd like to discuss a question, a specific question, that I kind of have a problem with. It goes like this. We like to ask little kids, what do you want to be when you grow up? It's a stupid question. Now, obviously, there are no stupid questions, but what a stupid question. What do you want to be when you grow up? What do you want to be? What do you want to be? I'm sorry, we don't decide our states of being. We don't. You will be happy when your child says their first word. You will be angry at that guy in the Lexus who cuts you off in traffic. What a jerk. You will be tired if this speech goes on for like way too long. In many ways, we are just observant passengers riding the curves of our own states of being. Now, if I'm tasked in giving you any advice, the first half of it would be to just accept that now. If you are currently five foot two and you'd like to be seven feet tall, it is with a heavy heart that I tell you, the overwhelming likelihood is that you probably, probably will not be. If you'd like to be a 17th century composer, you maybe, maybe, but the you probably won't be. Um, if you want to be the first person to set foot on Mars, there's a possibility. It still, you know, hasn't happened yet, but you have to be prepared for the likelihood of a life in which you will not be. Now, these are ultimately unattainable goals, but what about little ones? I want to be on time for work today. Traffic, that guy in the Lexus, ah! I, I want to be well-rested. Construction across the street wakes you up at like 6.30. Why do they do it that early? What's the deal? Do they even do it that early? Am I just exaggerating? I don't know. The only thing we really need to be is ready. Ready to not live the exact versions of our dreams that we've planned out for ourselves, no matter how big or small. Now, this is because we have little choice in what we will be. I didn't choose to have a pleasant singing voice any more than I chose to have alarmingly sweaty hands. Now, there's a lot of pure, raw, unadulterated luck in what you will be. But let's not get too discouraged by that. That's just a poor craftsman blaming their tools. Don't let semantics fool you. We may not control what we will be, but we have all the control, all the control, in what we will do. And I'm not speaking of a work hard enough and you will succeed kind of do. Succeed? I'm talking about transcending success. How does one transcend success? You do it by following what you want to do. What's so great about defining ourselves by what we are anyway? I am a firefighter. I am a teacher. I am a singer. Whatever happened to I fight fires, I teach, I sing? That sounds redundant, but you'd be surprised at how many professionals I've met in my career who have achieved their goal of being the exact thing they always dreamed they would be, only to find out that it requires doing something. <laughs> so the second half of my advice, and the more important part, would be think about the do. Follow the do. Live for the do. Live for what you want to do. What you want to do may not make a lot of money. That's okay. What you want to do may not make a lot of sense to a lot of people. That's okay, too. You'll hear a lot of people say, learn to enjoy what you do. It's backwards. They're asking you to settle. No. Reaffirm your belief in learning to do what you enjoy. Congratulations to everyone. Thanks for listening, and I'd like to thank all the teachers and faculty and staff and parents for doing all that they do, and all of the graduates, thank you for what you're about to do. Congratulations.